we're going to install the Claridge vertical slider. The first thing you do is you want to determine where you want it on the wall. After that, you want to make sure that you've got your base plate completely level. Once you get your base plate completely level, what you're gonna do is take one of your side housings, you're gonna lay it down, it's got an access panel on the front. You'll wanna open that up by taking all the screws out. Okay, so now you'll secure your side panel with your base plate using a screw provided. And once you do that, you're gonna determine and try to find plumb. Once you've plumbed your side, you wanna secure it to the wall. Okay, at this point, you're gonna install your back panel. And what we recommend is that you use an adhesive on the back. You wanna use about a golf ball size glob of adhesive every 12 inches across the back of the panel. After that being done, you wanna slide it into the channel on the upright. At this point, you're gonna put your base trim down for your back panel. These come in a stock size and what you'll have to do is measure your back panel and you'll cut your trim according to the back panel size. After you've got that done, you'll secure it to the wall. Okay, at this point, we're gonna install our H-bar. It also comes in a stock size and what you're gonna have to do again is cut it down to the length of your back panel, which we have already done. At this point, we're gonna install the top panel. Be sure to add the adhesive just like you did on the bottom and slide it into place. Okay, now that you've got your top panel secured, the next step will be to put your trim on the top. It's just like it was on the bottom. It comes in a stock size. You'll need to cut it down to the panel length. Now we're just gonna put that up there temporarily so you'll have adjustment later but you wanna make sure that you secure it somehow so it won't fall down while you're installing the rest of the unit. And now we're gonna install our slider, making sure that we have the back to the back and the front to the front. And the way you know that is because they've got screws on the trim on the back. Slide it into your housing, like so. This one goes in the same way as the back one. Okay, now that once you've got both your sliders on and they're resting on your rubber bumpers on the bottom, the next step is going to be to install this side housing. Okay, as you notice, I haven't put that screw in there and you won't be able to access that until we put the sliders up. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one screw in our side housing and then we're gonna to try to plumb it and put our top on. That's gonna leave us an adjustment at the top. Making sure it's plumb, and it is, we'll add another screw. You have an access panel on your top and you'll want to remove it now. What, 
what that'll enable you to do is to be able to mount it to the wall. With the hardware provided, we'll secure the head to the sides. Once you have that done, you'll want to finish securing your side housing to the wall. Okay, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna route our cables, starting with the back sliding panel cables. We'll route them through the head. Okay, it's crucial that once you get it slid through the head there that you go between the pulley and the cotter pin so it will slide freely. We'll go to this pulley in the middle, routing them just opposite of what he's doing on that side. But at this point, you want to look and make sure that you've got your cable routed between your cotter pin and your pulleys. And at this point, we're going to install our weights. Slide the cable clamps provided onto the cable and then through the loop on the weights. At this point, what you want to do is take all the slack that you can out of the cable. And secure the clamps. We'll be providing enough clamps for two per cable and that we recommend that you use both per cable. Okay, at this point, we've got both of our weights secured to our cables. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna test our back panel, making sure that it freely goes up and down. Which it does. After you've tested this, what, what the next step is gonna be is to install our cover plates on our weights. Once you've got your cover plates on, the next step is gonna be routing your cables for your front slider, just like you've done your back one. Once you've got your weights mounted to your cables, you wanna test your front slider just like you did your back. Making sure that it slides freely. After this, we'll put our front face covers on. Okay, now that we've got both cover plates on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna back up and go back to those screws that we didn't secure before putting our sliders in. Now that we've tested everything and we know that it's all correct, it's time to mount our side housing to our bottom. Once we've got our side housing secured to our bottom plate, it's time to go ahead and put, put our access panel back on and we'll secure our back panel trim. Go ahead and take the tape off that you helped hold that secure earlier. You want to take that back trim and you want to push it up to take all the space out to make it nice and smooth and flush. <clears throat> Once you've got that complete, one of the last things you're going to do is put your finger pulls on your sliding panels.
Okay, once you've got that completed, you wanna just give it one more go over and just make sure everything's operating properly. You've completed the process of installing a Claridge vertical sliding unit. For additional information on these and other innovative products, please contact the leader in the industry, Claridge Products, at ClaridgeProducts.com. <laughs>